Hey everyone, welcome to the channel for another Escape from Tarkov video. In this one, I've got a sequel to one of my recent videos, showcasing three more weapon builds that are aiming for solid PvP stats without the full top tier price tag. For this video, I'll be taking a look at the M1A, HK416, and AKM, with a build for each that's trying to get good stats for PvP, but also trying to save money by using alternate attachments that are cheaper than the best in slot parts. These aren't your typical budget builds that aim to be as cheap as possible, but they're effective PvP builds that skip the often overpriced meta attachments to save a bit of money while still having low recoil and decent ergonomics. You will need level 4 traders for some parts of these builds, and I'll be sure to point out where you can use the flea market to save money on common attachments that are usually a good price on the market. But with that intro out of the way, let's take a look at these builds, starting with a setup that you can use on the AKM and AK74 to get very solid recoil stats at a pretty decent price. This build will work on both the AKM and AK-74 with just a few minor tweaks, but I'm focusing on the AKM for this one because after the recoil buff, these things seriously shred, and you can easily access the top tier 762 BP ammo by crafting it in the hideout using one green gunpowder. Between the recoil buff and this easy access to top tier ammo, I think the AKM has a solid place as a mid to late game staple weapon that you can build for a good price and get reliable access to great ammo. I've been using it a lot, and I've definitely seen a lot more players than usual rolling with an AKM or AK-103 since the buff. Starting from the muzzle, on this build I'm going with the Lantac Draken Compensator at skier level 4, which is the best in slot muzzle for the AKM when it comes to recoil. If you're doing this build on an AK-74, you'll want to go for the PWS CQB Compensator, sold by skier level 3. Next up for this build, the handguard I've gone for on this one is the Hexagon AK Handguard, which is sold by Mechanic level 3, but it's actually much cheaper on the flea market, coming in at around a 50% discount at 16,000 rubles for the average lowest price. This handguard has above average recoil stats and among the highest ergonomics for the AK handguards and since it's a common drop it's cheap on the market and pretty easy to find yourself in weapon crates or just loose spawns. This handguard takes hexagon rails which are sold by mechanic level 4 and will let you mount foregrips and tactical devices on the handguard. The grip on this build is the Zenit RK1 foregrip, which I've mentioned in several videos is my most used foregrip on recoil focused setups. To get an optic on the AKM you have a lot of options, but for this one I just went with the Bastion dust cover to get a rail for a sight. You can use a different optic if you have a preference, but on this build I went with the Cobra reflex sight for the extra recoil reduction, which can be pretty useful on the AKM. The stock on this build is the Zhukov S AK stock sold by Peacekeeper level 4. This is among the best attachments in the game for pure recoil control, but can only be used by certain AK variants, which is why this build is based around the AKM and AK-74N. Finally, I swapped the pistol grip for the Tapco Saw style pistol grip at Peacekeeper level 2, which is a very cost effective ergonomics boost for the AK. The overall stats on this build for an AKM come out to 60 recoil and around 60 ergonomics. If you build this on an AK-74N, it's got 50 recoil and around 65 ergonomics. For the total price, you're only looking at around 127,000 rubles total to set this build up, depending on the flea market prices. Personally, I think this is an extremely cost effective setup, coming in at around 40,000 rubles below the price of a best in slot AK, while being very close to the same when it comes to raw stats and overall performance. Next up for this video, I've got a build for the M1A that uses some flea market cost cutting strats to set up a short M1A SAS build for less than 150k. This build is a little bit dependent on flea market prices being stable, so on a bad day it might be a little more expensive, but generally these prices are pretty stable in my experience. First up, to get the M1A to start the build, I usually like to do the barter trade at Peacekeeper level 3 for 8 USB adapters. These are extremely common to find in raid, and on the flea market, generally go from around 4,000 up to 8,000 rubles, meaning you can get an M1A for between 40 to 48,000 rubles using this trade most of the time. After getting it, I strip off everything except the receiver and the barrel and start from the ground up. The first piece I add is the SOCOM 16 threaded compensator sold by Mechanic Level 4. There's two versions of this, so make sure you get the threaded version with a slot for the muzzle device. Next, I add the Lantac Dragon compensator from Peacekeeper Level 4, which is the best in slot recoil part for the short barreled M1A. After this, the most important piece of this build is the Troy SAS chassis for the M1A, which is sold for around 40,000 rubles at mechanic level 4, but recently I've seen it as cheap as 20,000 rubles or less on the flea market. This item was added to the loot tables in the 12.6 patch, which means it can be found in raid and has fallen in price on the market pretty dramatically, which is great news for anyone who likes to build M1As with this setup. 
The SAS chassis lets you add a foregrip to the M1A, and for this one, I went with the RK1 again because I'm leaning this build more towards a recoil focused setup. Next up, the stock on this build is kind of an odd choice, going with the Armacon Baskax stock, which is extremely cheap on the market or from traders. Even I'll admit this thing looks butt ugly on the M1A. However, the stats on it are actually pretty amazing for the price, coming in at only 2% below the best in slot option for recoil, while costing a quarter of the price. It's not pretty, but it works, and it helps shave off a lot of cost on any builds that use buffer tube stocks like the M4, HK, and MPX. For the optic on this one, I've been using an EOTech hollow sight for close range maps, and then an Elcan Spectre 1-4 scope for long range maps, which is a very good budget scope. Finally, the pistol grip on this one is the Hogue rubber grip, which is all around the most cost effective option for this M1A. For a finishing touch, you can add a pair of MBUS iron sights as well for the extra ergonomics, but it's definitely optional. For overall stats on this setup, it comes in at 72 recoil and around 65 ergonomics, with a total cost of around 140,000 rubles depending on the flea market prices. Personally, I've been surprised at how well this build works. It's got great recoil stats for a short M1A, and the reduced length makes it a lot easier to handle in close quarters. If you want to take this build a step further though, for about 30k extra, you can bring the recoil down by another 20 points. First, grab the longer 22 inch barrel from Mechanic Level 3, which is about 26,000 rubles, and then you can sell the shorter barrel back to Mechanic to save a little bit of money as well. Next, go to Peacekeeper Level 3 and buy the A3 adapter for the blast mitigation device, as well as the Lantac blast mitigation device itself. These two parts work with the Lantac Dragon Compensator, giving you insane amounts of total recoil control. With these changes, the build comes down to 51 recoil and around 59 ergonomics, for about 175,000 rubles total. This build lets you spam with the M1A and stay on target, turning it into one of the strongest 7.62 rifles in the game. For the last build in this video, I've got a suppressed HK416 setup that I've been using quite a bit during this wipe. When it comes to the HK versus the M4, I generally prefer the M4 because of the more varied attachment options, but the HK requires less modding to get to low recoil, which makes it easier and faster to set up. The 416 also has a higher rate of fire, which means it drops enemies a bit faster when your shots are on target, and all around, I can see why a lot of people prefer the HK over the M4. First up, I usually just grab an HK from the flea market for around 45 to 50,000 rubles and swap the default barrel for the 20 inch HK barrel, which is a big step up in recoil control from the default option. You can also sell back the shorter barrel to mechanic, which helps shave off a bit of the total price. For the muzzle device, I first get the Surefire SF3P compensator, and then I add the SOCOM RC2 suppressor, which is new in the 12.6 patch and is usually only 25 to 30,000 rubles on the market. This combo gets you close to best in slot stats for about half the price of the wave suppressor, which is the actual best in slot part. Personally, I think this is a great addition for 5.56 builds, and I use it on pretty much all of my M4 and HK setups now. Next up, the handguard on this one is the HK Extended Quad Rail Handguard, which can be found on the market for around 7 to 10,000 rubles most of the time. It's not the best in slot part, but it's very cost effective and you don't need any extra rails to mount accessories. For the grip on this one, I went with the Magpul RBG grip to add a bit of ergo to the build without sacrificing too much recoil. For the stock, I've got the MFT BUS stock on this build, which gets you best in slot recoil stats for only around $80. The pistol grip on this one is the Hera Arms HG15 grip, which is only around 4,000 rubles for Mechanic Level 4 for a pretty nice ergonomics boost. Finally, for the optic on this one, I was mostly using an EOTech Hollow Sight, but I also did use the Elcan Spectre 1-4 scope that I mentioned in the last build for a couple runs, and it worked pretty well, only adding around 10,000 rubles extra to the build. For the stats on this one, it came out to 44 recoil and around 58 ergonomics for about 145,000 rubles total. I think that's a pretty solid price for a suppressed low recoil HK build, and I put in quite a few good raids with this setup during this patch. Well that about covers it for these builds. Hopefully you can get some good use out of them and put some solid raids in if you try them out. Let me know what you think down in the comments and I'd love to hear about your favorite budget focused PvP builds. I'm thinking my next weapon builds feature will be on weapons that I think are underrated or underused despite being powerful or useful in their own way. So stay tuned for that and let me know if there's any weapons you think fit that description. I'll be streaming more Escape from Tarkov on Twitch and if you want to catch some raids I've got a link to that down in the description. There's also links to my Twitter and Discord server and my Patreon page for anyone looking to join the community or support the channel. Thanks for checking out the video, feel free to leave any comments, corrections, or suggestions down below, and until next time, 
stay safe in Tarkov City.